Day two of Cybos 2022 offered something for everyone. Zayue Shu kicked the day off with an inside leadership session on the cross-border payments industry. As the scope and the structure of cross-border payment have been ever evolving, more opportunities are lying ahead of us. We could make good use of modern technology, implement international rules and standards, innovate on business and service model, and benefit more users. And elsewhere, an InnoTribe panel on the future of money gave us all plenty to ponder. I think it's fair to say that for the first few years of fintech, whatever you want to call it, the banks felt a sense of control over the timings. In every conversation you had, you'd get a sense that as banks, as bankers, as decision makers, we get to flex on when, what, and how. And then the, the realization that none of those things actually is accurate and the economy around you is digitizing rapidly, the regulator is learning fast, and actually that control isn't there. I just want to draw out a point that I think the urgency for the banks came not because of the startup threats. I think the banks that really got it understood that a threat was coming from Amazon, Apple, Alibaba, Alphabet, Meta. It's, it's not from the fintechs. Their real, I think, competitive pressure for a bank is these companies that have nothing to do with financial mm -hmm. services, but have wallets, have mindshare, have billions and billions of users and data, which they end up grab you know, in Southeast Asia, where they end up becoming a currency. And I think that was the sense of urgency that really fueled, again, the banks that really got it and understood, OK, then we should start working with some of these fintechs because we are going to have our lunch taken away from us by someone from a completely separate sector. The market for tokenized securities is nascent but growing rapidly. And it was the subject of one of the day's industry sessions. Now, today, the market is growing. Huh? It's uh, relatively small. We are still at the level of proof of concept, uh, even if we do real transactions. But uh, we will need more volume in the years to come. And this will change dramatically the, say, the way we think finance. Yeah. You have just a token, you have a single registry, and everyone tap this single registry. If we talk about tokenized assets, and I'm just talking about clients that are at least north of $100 million in revenue and their business line are tokenizing structured products, bonds, mortgages, physical commodities, carbon credits, uh, life insurance, annuities, uh, healthcare claims, um, and I can cut. So I actually think that we're there. Billions of pieces of paper currently underpin global trade flows. And one of the reasons is the legal uncertainty over electronic title documents, a subject discussed on one conference stage. If I'm going to shift from a paper process, people looking at pieces of paper, to a digital one, I need to make a capital investment. And I need to prove the return on that investment and prove what I'm going to gain from uh, investing in new software, new systems, changing the people's jobs, uh, certifying the process that I did before. The second barrier is the interoperability pieces. And if I, as one entity of trade, jump into the electronic world. Are all of my trading partners jumping in with me? An open banking for Treasury session focused on finding achievable new opportunities for corporates. I feel that SWIFT could be playing, I mean, its role is increased in terms of the adoption of technology, right? But I do feel they could play a bigger role because I think they're still operating in that sort of global space, which is we look after high value payments cross border. But the truth is, Sometimes I think these, the, the central banks and regulators that, that birth these systems need more guidance. Digital transformation was also at the heart of the day's big issue debate on instant and frictionless cross-border payments. It is in all our interest to actually reduce friction and reduce cost. And whether we move ultimately fiat or CBDC is probably a more a question of use cases, but we should be able and we are actually able to do both. Well, I think uh, there's no real problem with new entries, of course, but uh, they are not or mostly not starting in a very regulated uh, world. And the question is 
what policymakers will do there. Not only uh, central banks, uh, especially in Europe, there is uh, a common understanding within the politics that uh, there have to be a regulatory environment uh, also for them. So, another packed day at Cybos 2022. There'll be just as much on offer today, so have a great time. <laughs>